Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello, I'm just going to say hi to everyone. Hi, Saraf, Amir Rashid, Atanasio, Nabil, Jinshan, and Kushwin. And uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Niska, Niska Essien. Welcome. Welcome to our um, application tips webinar or ask me anything. So um, my name is Fazila. I'm part of the admissions team here at ESB. A little bit about me. I've been with ESB for four years now, uh, going on five. And uh, it's been a wild ride so far. Um, I'm really excited to be able to talk to you about application tips. So um, just before we get um, to the meat of the session, um, I'd like to give a little overview about our school. So here goes. Um, but I think that if you're in this application tips webinar, uh, by now you should pretty much have a good idea of what, uh, who we are, uh, what we stand for. But I thought it would be nice to give a little overview. So um, we are basically a kind of a marriage between uh, two very respected bodies, MIT Sloan School of Management. Yes, the MIT, the number one uh, university uh, ranked by QS rankings um, year after year. So this is a business school at MIT. It's called MIT Sloan School of Management. And uh, this is a collaboration uh, with Bank Nagara Malaysia. So we're hoping to serve as a talent magnet and a talent multiplier, not only for Asia, but also the world. But we specialize in Asia because that's where we are. Um, so we have uh, two MBA programs here at ESB. So we're kind of thinking about um, what if someone has, you know, you are you know, middle management, you're ready to do something different, you're looking to make a change, and you want to explore uh, more aspects of personal and professional development. Um, so maybe the MBA full-time is the program that you're looking for. I think um, I may have to ask you to mute your microphones uh, so that you know, the flow will not be disrupted. Thank you so much. Um, so that is the MBA full time, but we also have another MBA program, uh, the MBA uh, work for working professionals. So this is like for people who are kind of, you're already happy in the industry that you're in, but you want to accelerate further your development, you have a strong support network in your company, and maybe, you know, because of family and uh, personal finance considerations, you want to continue working while you're doing your MBA. So this is the MBA for working professionals for the MBA full time. Um, basically you will not be working throughout your MBA. Okay, so this is an overview of the program. I think by now, if you're in this session or uh, you're actually applying to ASB or you're, you're super interested to apply to ASB, you should kind of know uh, what our programs are like. So I've kind of mentioned it before, but a key feature of both programs is the four weeks spent at MIT Sloan on campus taking classes. Um, the key uh, difference is that we will have um, uh, US tracks and maybe China industry tracks, although these may change year after year. Um, that's compulsory part of the MBA full-time, but for the MBA for working professionals, these tracks are optional. Um, and for the working professionals, you travel to campus uh, roughly every six weeks for one week uh, taking classes. Um, and so for our MBA full-time, we do have fellowships uh, available. Um, however, for the MBA for working professionals, so that's a little mistake on the slide. So we call them discount awards, or you may be uh, a significant amount, about 50% of our working professional students are actually corporate sponsored. So we want to build, um, we want to look for people who are interested in building a global career. So if you want to broaden your horizons, uh, literally, by considering careers in other countries, maybe our MBA is a good fit. So because of the action learning curriculum, you get career transformation. And a lot of our, our alumni have demonstrated strong global career placement outcomes. And uh, we do have uh, market leading scholarships or discount awards. So this is a roughly um, how our uh, program looks like. Uh, we begin in August. There's only one intake um, every year in August. And uh, it's separated into five semesters and our students graduate in May or June. Um, you will have elective courses uh, beginning in semester two. 
and uh, there is an entrepreneurship track uh, kind of built in throughout the MBA. Another key feature of our program is action learning. So right now we've done, uh, our students have completed 370 plus projects with over 180 uh, hosts in 30 different countries. So why does action learning work? It's the chance for you to kind of try out what you learn in class in a real world setting. Why, if you're just sitting in a classroom, everything can seem quite academic and quite dry, but if you are actually given the opportunity to try out all the frameworks and tools that you learn in a real business, uh, in a real world, solving real business problems. Um, so that's how, you know, there's a real chance for um, things to be figured out before you graduate rather than, hey, I've graduated, I've learned all these fantastic things, and now I want to figure out how to apply it to my work. And sometimes it may not be possible. So that's where we are. Uh, we're right in the middle of Kuala Lumpur. Uh, this is actually the uh, KTM Bank Nagara station. So for those of you who are familiar in Kuala Lumpur, uh, we are 10 minutes away from the Petronas Twin Towers. So this is our beautiful academic building. And right next door is the residential building. So for the full-time program, all of our students live together on campus. And if you're from the working professionals, every uh, one week, every six weeks, you'll come to um, stay here with us and we provide you a room in the hotel block um, with uh, facilities. So this is our beautiful campus. I was just there this morning. It's pretty awesome. Um, it's gorgeous. Um, right now we're not ready for visitors, but hopefully soon uh, we'll keep you guys posted. So this is the reddest residence. Some people ask me, is this a dorm? This is not a dorm. This is where our students uh, stay and live, you actually get your own kitchen, you get your own room, and you get your bathroom. Um, the bathroom you don't share with anyone, but the kitchen you do share with the person next door. Um, so this is how the full-time program looks like. Uh, right now we have about 45 students, uh, about almost 80% are international and there are 18 countries represented. So this year we're looking to, um, to have a similar cl uh, size class maybe between 45 to 60 students um, but absolutely we will only recruit uh, or admit people this based on quality uh, this is also um, our student uh, population for the mba for working professionals is about 21 to 25 and it's different from the mba uh, full-time whereby the majority are internationals for this program uh, the majority are malaysians but we do have people commuting in from uh, overseas, you know, as far away as South Africa sometimes, or even at one point, Mexico, South Korea, uh, Vietnam, and Japan. Um, and we recently launched this new program called the Global Master of Central Banking. Um, so right now we have 16 students and this program is only open to um, employers of central bankers. So we have like amazing faculty on board. Um, I think that you may have been familiar with them already. Uh, they have graduated uh, or been trained in the world's top universities. And this is a short overview of some of them. Uh, like we are very um, committed to having the best faculty that we can hire from all over the world. So another thing about our MBA program is, is that it's not just about sitting in classroom and learning. We also want to teach you, um, you know, learning uh, is the sharp skills of finance, account accounting, economics. Like those are the things that the tools that you need to do to do your job. But what people don't realize is smart skills. It's also something that is very important. Things like leadership, communications, creativity, growth mindset, you know, managing ambiguity. These are things that are very much needed for um, upwardly, uh, upwardly mobile professionals such as yourselves. And this is what is embedded in uh, within our MBA program. So kind of a little overview on our application process, uh, minimum requirements, we you must absolutely have a bachelor's degree to apply to our program, minimum of two years work experience, and proof of English language proficiency. So these are the deadlines. So uh, you may have noticed that tomorrow is the round one deadline. So I do hope that a lot of you are prepared and ready to submit your application on time. And uh, I mentioned the two-year work experience. What if you don't have the two-year work experience? What if you just graduated from university? So you may want to apply to the MBA uh, early admissions process. 
uh, is if you have less than two years of full-time work experience or you are graduating from an undergraduate degree next year. And uh, how this works is that you get admitted now and you then must work full-time uh, two to five years before um, getting your admission offered to matriculate or coming to ESB. So this is roughly the application components. We have the resume, cover letter, uh, academic trans uh, transcripts, and that also includes the degree certificates. You know that when you go on stage to receive your degree, that degree certificate, please also include it in your uh, ESB MBA application. That is a requirement by the Ministry of Education, so we absolutely have to have it. There's a video statement that is one minute, two recommendations. The GMAT or GRE test, which if you have been doing your research and applying to other schools, um, usually um, other schools require this, for, but for us, it's optional. So once you've submitted all of your, um, make sure your application is complete, submit it by the deadline, and we only invite those that we're interested in to interview. So um, this is shortly just a, uh, um, a slide of some people who have our students who have graduated. They are now all over the world, um, you know, not necessarily in their country of citizenship. So that's why, why uh, that's what uh, we mean by a global experience. Um, so yeah, feel free to reach out to alumni if you're um, interested to know more. And these are a couple of our um, MBA for Working Professionals program alumni uh, who are doing amazing job uh, in their current um, places. So we do have financial aid. Uh, if you ask me about scholarships and financial aid, uh, we do have it. So for our uh, fellowships, these are absolutely merit-based. And then if you are admitted, you then have the opportunity to apply for needs-based uh, financial aid. Um, so the first thing you should do is apply to ESB. And if you are admitted, then uh, you'll be considered for financial aid. Um, so yeah, I did mention just now what our um, application process was. So I just also wanted to mention about the MBA um, requirement for bachelor's degree. We also welcome the APEL certification and this only applies to Malaysians, yeah? So only Malaysians, if you do not have a degree, you have at least 10 years work experience, you should um, apply to receive the APEL A certification is the APAL A certification. Go to the Malaysia uh, MQA website, Malaysian Qualifications Agency website. You have to go through their process. I think there's a fee involved. The process takes two to three months. Uh, there's an evaluation process, there's an interview, and then at the end of it, if you pass everything, they will award you with an APAL A cert, and that is what you can use to apply to ASB. But the same kind of um, other things are pretty much similar. So these are the deadlines. Tomorrow is the round one deadline for MBA full-time. I hope you're ready. The other deadlines are uh, you know, next year. Um, I would absolutely recommend you to apply to the um, earlier round that you can, um, as early as possible to maximize admissions opportunities as well as fellowship opportunities you know because the earlier you apply um, the more seats that, that are av available in the program and the more um, fellowships there are that haven't been awarded yet so I've mentioned this earlier um, so because we all love tips and tricks I'm going to share a few of uh, my tips and tricks for all of you so your resume uh, follow all of the instructions that is the biggest thing um, a lot of people sometimes, you know, um, this is an evaluation process, and we we also want we also want to see how um, detailed you are, how good you are at following actual instructions. So follow all of the instructions. When we say resume must be two pages, it has to be two pages. Don't send in uh, four or five pages. And for the cover letter, like explain to us why ESB, why you. Um, and for the video statement, uh, don't stress too much about it. I've, I've come across people who sent me PowerPoint presentations with them reading over the slides with very loud music. I couldn't hear what they were saying. Um, so that is a bad video. So basically a good video is whereby you introduce yourself to the ESB admissions committee and you can absolutely use your phone, get someone to help you. There are a lot of um, 
details online on how to take a good video. Um, so you should absolutely leverage this. Uh, and you can also Google for examples online, MBA statement video. Um, the other thing is at this point, you know, you should choose recommenders who know you, those who have specific examples about you. Uh, I don't want to see a recommender saying that, hey, um, let's say your name is Aisha. Aisha is such a great team leader, full stop. They have to elaborate and qualify that statement, provide evidence, describe actual examples of when you demonstrate that this quality of leadership. Um, and uh, the other thing is that for your academics, I mentioned we want your official transcripts. Scan and upload all of them, every single page, because we're going to take a very close look at your academics uh, to ascertain whether you know you are um, you are able to withstand the rigor of our MBA program. Uh, we also would like to see your degree certificates, uh, so make sure that you at least take a screenshot and upload that uh, document into the ASB application. Um, so if there, uh, there are any elements of the application that are missing or we have further questions, one of us from the admissions team may reach out to you, so be sure to check your email, respond as soon as possible. Because you know, if you there's a delay in you know, answering our concerns, then there may be a delay in processing your application. And if you miss the timeline, then maybe we are not able to consider you for this round. But then we have to punt you uh, for the following round, and you do not want that to happen. So what next? So let's say all of your uh, documents are complete, everything is fine. The next step is to, you know, uh, wait for that email uh, or log into your application account. So I, I just wanted to share that, you know, our team has been working hard. So a lot of the application process is managed through your login. So when you know when you log in, apply now and you start your application. So a lot of uh, the updates will be within that application. So make sure you are alert. Um, you check for the email when there's an update, we'll send you uh, an email and then you go and log in to the application portal. So that's how you will receive your, uh, you know, you will, you'll probably can see the progress of your application. Is there any missing documents, right? You'll see it there. There's usually a checklist and for, um, uh, you know, if you even get the call for interview, you also see it in your application portal. So that application portal, is your best friend. Uh, so, you know, make sure you don't forget your pin and everything. But although you have, if you have uh, forgotten your pin, you just like reach out to us and we'll um, sort that out for you. So for interviews, uh, be yourself. We are looking for authenticity. Um, and some part, uh, it'll take about uh, 45 minutes. Uh, we'll be asking you questions based on what you submitted in your application. Uh, but also, uh, we may ask you behavioral type questions. Now, um, what, are, what is that? You can look it up uh, in your preparation for the interview if you are called. So we will ask you specific questions and ask uh, you to give examples uh, of a specific incidents in your past. Uh, you know, and, and we may probe further um, based on, you know, if there's anything um, that... Uh, arises questions. So the most important thing I can tell you is be yourself. I mean, we want to get to know you. So our application process is holistic. It's not just about, you know, your academics. It's not just about your recommendation letters. It's, this is our way of getting to know you and kind of see what you bring to the table to the MBA cohort. So we recruit based on diversity. Uh, we don't want a class full of Malaysians, for example. We would love to have diversity in gender, ethnicity, professional background. Um, so uh, tell us about yourself. Uh, allow us to, uh, to get to know you. Um, some people from the Asian region, I feel I can say this because I'm Asian. So some of us, we are a bit reserved. I'm not telling you to be TMI or you know reveal too much information, but absolutely be forthcoming, be honest, be authentic. Um, 
about uh, what we ask you. Um, so yeah, so for this, we also ask you for personal employment information. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's like some parts of the application, it's like filling a form. Make sure it matches your resume. Um, some people have typos between work experience. Um, so we want to make sure that, you know, everything tallies. And uh, just a heads up, uh, should you be admitted into the program, we will absolutely uh, do a background check on you. And this is standard practice across uh, top business schools across the world. If you apply to Harvard, if you apply to MIT, if you apply to you know, any top MBA program, there will be a background check uh, you know, conducted uh, on you based on what you submitted in your um, application. So uh, in your resume, you also want to have a brief description of your responsibilities, what you do, what your level of responsibility is. Um, so at this point, it is okay to be unsure of your future plans. I mean, that's fine. Sometimes some people come to the MBA because they are on a search. They want to know what, uh, what they do, what, what they are looking for. Um, but even if you are still exploring or in exploratory mode, absolutely have a direction, but also know that, you know, directions can change. You are learning and growing and developing throughout your time at ESB. And it's not um, unusual for some people to change direction, but, you know, have a direction, have a way forward. Um, and there's the statement of purpose of cover letter. You have to be absolutely clear why you want to study for an MBA, why ASB, why now? And uh, what do you hope to achieve with this uh, amazing experience? Um, be as uh, detailed as you can and also highlight some examples of achievements. Um, for essay, uh, showcase um, your work throughout the application. Uh, and please don't use the same example twice. Uh, you know, have a few examples ready uh, with detail. Um, you know, talk about what you did, the impact you had. Don't overuse the word we or I, and everything should fit on one page. Uh, be yourself. Um, so for your resume, um, I think I actually mentioned it earlier. Um, if there are gaps in your resume, like uh, if you took a career break, let's say for a couple of months, maybe you were traveling or maybe you were taking care of a loved one who's ill in the hospital, or maybe you just needed a break. So please explain these career gaps. Um, you may use the um, optional essay space in order to do so. So it should be kind of clear, right? So make sure we see your entire career and all of your experiences. I feel that I don't have to tell you to use, you know, a clear font, you know, make it easy on the eyes, make it easy for us to kind of uh, see, see very quickly, like where you are, like imagine we do have a lot of applications. So please make it easy on our eyes to get to know you. Transcripts and degree certificates. Um, Undergraduate, absolutely. And graduate, if you have a master's, a PhD, we wanna see those degree certificates and the transcripts if you have them. Um, and at this point, it's just a soft copy. So you just need to scan and upload. And if you have taken any quantitative courses, um, let's say you've taken some data analytics class or maybe algebra or calculus, we will want to see that. And if you have non-English transcripts, I know we say there even less, but I'll just tell you up front, please get them translated by a professional translator because if you don't, we will absolutely email you. It's like, hey, we cannot move forward with the application until you have your transcripts translated professionally uh, by a qualified translator uh, and upload that. So we want to see both. If it's non-English transcripts, upload the one in the original, doc uh, original language and uh, your translated version. Professionally done, please. Oh, recommendations. I could talk for hours when it comes to recommendations, but I'll try and keep it short. Basically, we use the GMAT common letter of recommendation, and this is a form. 
So once you key in your um, recommended details in the application, we will reach out to them directly and uh, send them the link to your unique uh, recommendation form and they will have to fill it in and complete. So once your recommender has done that, uh, you will receive an email until they've done that. You will also receive like email updates like, hey, we are still waiting for one recommendation or two, both recommendations from you. Um, so if you haven't submitted your uh, application yet, that's fine, but you should absolutely save the recommended details in the application. So a, a few tips, you have to choose someone who knows you well uh, over someone with a big title. So let's say uh, you know the CEO of your company or the president, but all you've done with the president is just say hi at the water cooler. Um, so don't ask them to be a recommender. I, I don't recommend it. Choose someone who knows you, um, who's worked with you closely as recently as possible. So if it's it could be your direct boss, um, that would be um, preferable. Uh, also could be one of them could also be a colleague, one of them could also be your mentor, and maybe uh, one of them could be a vendor. So uh, choose someone you, who knows you well and can give specific examples. So. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, some recommenders, they're just like one-liners and uh, it really breaks my heart because sometimes uh, a candidate is interesting, but it's hard to make a judgment on a person's professional qualities if they don't, uh, if they don't elaborate further about you. So... Um, Manage your recommender's expectations. You know, um, it's a form and then there's a space at the end. There's a little essay space and we want them to fill that in. And your ASB application will not be considered complete without both recommendations. So even if you submit it, but until your recommenders submit, we will not evaluate your application because it's incomplete. We are only able to evaluate completed applications. Um, I mentioned the interview, so it's 45 minutes uh, in length. Usually it's one by one. Sometimes it might be two interviewers, but usually it's one. So it's a conversation. So it's not an exam. Uh, there was some, I've heard some uh, interviewers, uh, you know, kind of probe further about your academics, but it's not an exam. It's more a conversation about fit. What will you contribute to the program? what will contribute to your classmates, why is this uh, the right program for you, why is it the right time for you, and we ask further questions based on what you submitted in your application and some behavioral questions which I already mentioned earlier. Okay, so there are top things to remember. Answer the question, be specific. Ask someone to review your writing. Uh, I found that very helpful. Uh, uh, when, uh, you know, someone who knows you well, ask for their feedback, uh, you know, whether this sounds like you, whether this is authentic, or maybe there's some typos, you know, you, you want to get your essays checked before submitting. Your recommended, recommenders should be able to meet your deadline. That's why you kind of have to um, let them know in advance what you're asking them to do. Um, tell us areas about your professional growth. Um, and, and also keep us updated. So sometimes some people, uh, they submit the application, but they're also planning to take the GMAT exam, for example. Uh, so you can send it in, let's say a few days after, uh, as soon as possible. Um, and also some people, you know, they suddenly got a promotion or something and they just submitted their application. So you may want to send us, you know, an email and send us your updated uh, resume. Uh, so we can um, include that in your application. So, you know, whatever updates, uh, keep us updated. Don't be shy. Um, you should be very clear why us. So I think that is uh, basically it. Um, come and say hi to me on LinkedIn. Say that you joined this webinar. I'll be happy to connect. Uh, you can also ask me questions uh, via LinkedIn uh, later on if I didn't get to your question now. And yes, and yeah, follow all of the social media. Uh, there's our Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. 
Um, but yeah, so now I, I like to open it to questions. Um, if there are any, you can type it in the chat uh, if you have any, but we also have some pre-submitted um, questions uh, that, uh, were, that I can go through. So, okay, I have a question from Joshua who says, what are the actual documents and letters needed in the application process? What exams are accepted for proof of English language proficiency? So we already explained that within the application portal and also on our website. But just to recap, we accept TOEFL, we accept IELTS, we accept the Pearson Test of English Academic. We also accept uh, Cambridge Proficiency and Advanced, uh, as well as proof of English language proficiency. But if your bachelor's degree, hi Joshua, oh, you're here. If your bachelor's degree was conducted in English, and uh, you know, if your university, uh, you know, if we ask you, your university will be able to provide a, a letter saying that your um, degree was taught in English. Uh, so we, you don't have to take a, an English language proficiency test, but this only applies to the bachelor's degree, okay? Your bachelor's degree must have been conducted in English. Otherwise, please submit a TOEFL, IELTS, PTE, or Cambridge. Uh, and for Malaysians, it's MUET. Um, I'll add a note about Malaysians. Um, for Malaysians, generally, we will use the interview and the application to assess your le level of English, English language proficiency. But for international students, the uh, if you don't have a bachelor's degree conducted in English, you must have an English proficiency test because you won't be able to get a student visa without it. So this is a crucial piece of document. So if you have any questions, uh, please reach out to us. So I see Esther saying, what is the acceptance rejection rate at ESB? That depends. That absolutely depends. It depends on you know how many pe people apply in a given round, how competitive they are. Um, so um, it depends. It depends. Sometimes, you know, you get a slough of really good applicants and a lot of them end up being admitted. And sometimes we uh, are not able to admit many people. So you'll see some fluctuation in our class size. So our class size has been as low as 35 um, because, you know, if these are the number of quality people that we get, then these are the people that we are going to admit. We're not going to just increase the size just to warm the seats or something. No seat warmers at ESB. Can you share? Okay, I hope I answered your question, Esther. Um, can you please share? This is from Saraf. Can you please share the work experience range for a full time program and a WP program? Sure. So for the full time program, uh, the average is about four to five years of work experience. For the MBA uh, for working professionals, it's typically uh, a lot more, about seven to 10 years, but we've also had people with 15 to 20 years of work experience. So for the MBA work for working professionals, it's a, a kind of more mature crowd. Um, so for the uh, full-time program, it tends to be a bit younger. However, we do have people who are like in their late 30s and sometimes even early 40s and the full-time program. So it's a matter of fit, actually. Um, what about Tana? The two-page resume is not enough. Edward, thank you for your question. That's a great question. But uh, what about someone with 10 years of work experience and two-page resume is not enough to list all of your experiences and places of work? It should be. Um, my husband applied to MIT and he got in for the MBA. He was working 15 years at that point. He managed to fit in everything in two pages. So from experience, and I've seen, I've read a lot of applications, you are absolutely able to do that. So that's why we give you um, the prompt on focusing on your achievements. So uh, you may want to Google around and see what uh, such resumes look like. 
but we um, sometimes too much detail is too much detail. You should be detailed, but you should also, you know, um, follow the questions. Please don't use the resume. Let's say some people they use the same resume that they applied to for a, for another job for this um, to apply to an MBA. You have to follow the requirements. So if the requirements are two pages, it has to be two pages, no exception. Um, how has COVID-19 impacted student life at ESB? That is a great question, Joshua. So the biggest way that has impacted ESB is that um, uh, we had a lockdown uh, and, uh, you know, all of our, student, uh, our students, uh, we, we weren't able to dine out. Uh, there was a 10 kilometer radius um, uh, maximum uh, from our place of residence. Uh, but thankfully and happily, um, case numbers in Malaysia is, uh, is going down as we speak. Uh, our vaccination rate is uh, almost 70% right now. And uh, a lot of things are reopened. I've been dining out. I even saw the new uh, Shang-Chi movie at the theater. So while we all remain masked, uh, we are still um, you know, able to do a lot of things. So uh, because of COVID, uh, we uh, the Ministry of Education has only allowed uh, you know um, online classes. So for a, and it depends upon the safety levels at that time. So when the ministry announced it, we have to provide it online. So even though the students are on campus, they have to log in from their room and attend the classes. But uh, I'm happy to say that uh, last Friday uh, was our first day um, in a while that. Uh, students are allowed to be on campus. So we have begun face-to-face -face classes now. So that's one way it's an impacted us. Another way is that some of our students are not able to come into Malaysia, but I'm happy to report that, you know, students are arriving every day, even if they began the program uh, online, uh, they have either arrived in Malaysia by now or are making their way to Malaysia. So, you know, the the visa process is moving. So um, I'm pretty excited and pretty stoked. We had a welcome lunch last Friday. That was great. Uh, it was really rewarding for me to be able to meet all of the people, you know, that I've only interacted with uh, throughout the admissions process, but now I get to meet them in person. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps your questions. Okay, Amir Rashid, you can post your questions here. Yes, go ahead. So I'll move to Jin Shen now. Are there many rounds of interviews? No, typically only one interview. Um, does it depend on the amount of scholarship that is given to the students? So we make admissions and scholarship decisions at the same time. So you want to submit a very, you know, the, your best foot forward uh, for the ASB application. Uh, so typically there's only one interview. Sometimes there's two, but um, that's on a case by case basis. So if you are interviewed, we try to give you an admissions decision uh, within several weeks. And during that, uh, when you get your decision, if you're accepted, there's an admission letter. And then there's also a fellowship letter. So now this applies to the MBA full time. Yeah. So if we are awarding you a fellowship, you will receive these two letters at the same time. Um, Jonathan, what sort of additional reviews would be carried out if my referee decides to use their personal email address? Also, uh, is it possible to not have to submit their contact number? Um, I think the contact number is something that is compulsory. I'll have to check, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, if they decide to use their personal email address, um, we will um, conduct just heads up that we will contact your recommender um, if you're admitted or maybe during the admissions process to kind of check in with them. So um, is, it will be either us or it will be the background check company uh, who will get in touch. And at that point, uh, they may need to let us know their work email address. But yeah, so that's that's how we would impact it because we want to be sure that, you know, your, your referrer is really your referrer. Um, so it's best not to use a personal email address. How long does the admissions process take? So if you submit by tomorrow, you'll get a decision um, before Christmas. 
uh, we'll need time to kind of, we are a small team, so we need time to read your applications, conduct interviews. Um, admissions committee is represented by a wide range of departments in ASB, so it takes some time to coordinate these interviews. So uh, that's what I would be confident in communicating. Submit tomorrow. We, uh, you will typically get an, a decision letter by uh, before Christmas. What are the possible concentrations in the regular MBA? So there are two right now. There's a finance concentration and the supply chain concentration. But also remember, there's a kind of uh, MBA long uh, entrepreneurship um, track or uh, um, project that you have to do as well. I haven't conducted. So hi, Fazila. Hi, Atanisio. Uh, I haven't conducted any tests related to ESL. Can you? Yes, you can. You can submit your application right now, but um, we may uh, issue you a conditional admission letter, the condition being that you need to submit an ESL test. So that is what could happen. Unless you submit it to us before we release the decision, then you may get, yeah, I know we, we don't need to, sub, uh, to issue this conditional letter. Amiro Rashid. Thanks, Amiro, for typing in your question. Could I use my uncle? He served an advisory role. Uh, mm -hmm. Or would my investor be a better option? Who knows you best? Um, we generally discourage um, family members. However, if you do want to use your uncle as your recommender, I think you would have to explain it away in the optional essay. But we would prefer if someone, your recommender is not related to you. Uh, and number two, would a high GMAT score contribute to better chances of fellowship? What's the average GMAT score usually? So we don't have an average GMAT score because we are test score optional. But uh, we use the GMAT score primarily to assess your quantitative comfort. And also, it's also an indicator of your seriousness in applying to the MBA program. So uh, it may contribute to better chances of admission and may contribute to better chances of fellowship, especially if your first degree does not have a lot of quantitative subjects. Let's say you did linguistics. So there won't be a lot of like math in your uh, bachelor's degree transcript and also if your work experience doesn't have uh, a lot of quantitative work so in that case a GMAT may be advantageous um, so of course we would prefer a higher score but that's up to you another reason uh, for a GMAT is you know it's valid for five years so let's say you you apply to ESB with a GMAT score and then you graduate from ESV and you decide to apply to this special MIT Sloan um, Master of Science in Management Studies um, that is only open to graduates of partner schools of MIT Sloan and they require GMAT uh, scores. So, you know, it depends. So that's the answer, <laughs> depends. Um, now, question three, I have six years experience as senior executive, but I only finished the degree this year, part-time study. Could I still apply or the requirement refers to post-degree experience? Um, typically, um, we would prefer post-degree experience, but maybe it's worthwhile for you to, um, you know, schedule a call with me and uh, so that I can look further into your um, qualifications or work experience. Um, the answer, it depends. Uh, it may be okay, but it may not. It should be like full-time work experience. You know, it should be relevant. Um, I think, you know, this warrants a further conversation. So do get in touch with me, yeah? Uh, another question from Sarah. My application is in process. Um, will results for, but recommenders will take time to provide the letter of recommendation. Will results for round two applicants only be after round two closes, or it would be on a rolling basis? We would, uh, there may be an opportunity for a rolling basis, but that is not something that we can guarantee. It will depend upon our workload and timelines. So uh, the answer is there may be an opportunity for rolling admission, 
uh, but you should absolutely get in touch with us to discuss uh, you know, your, your situation. Jin Sen. <laughs> oh, goodness me. For the fellowship scholarship, may I know what's the usual number of scholarship mark given to the whole cohort? 100% around two, 75% around five, 50% around five. Um, it depends. Um, I'm still waiting to hear back, uh, you know, what our allocation is this year. It depends. If you're an absolute rock star, uh, like, you know, you're so, uh, you're very, you know, it's merit based. So the higher your merit is, uh, the more likely you are to get scholarship. If uh, so, this, we don't have a usual number of scholarship mark given to the court. But what I can say is that 100% fellowship, and it only covers the program fees, is going to be very rare. It's going to be very rare. So maybe, maybe it's one, maybe it's two, or maybe not. It depends. 75%, uh, no, it, it will depend. It will depend. So what you can do is submit a very strong application, make sure you follow all of our instructions and also submit as early as possible. So um, this year we do have um, uh, a number of fellowships available. So look into your, uh, the application. Uh, there are some essays that you may need to write uh, to be considered for other scholar fellowships as well, opportunities as well. So, um, so beyond what ESB provides, there are also uh, a few other opportunities. Okay, what values are ASB looking for in students besides authenticity? It could be helpful in an application, entrepreneurship, resilience, diversity. Yes, yes, and yes. Um, all of this could be helpful, but we don't want a class full of entrepreneurs. We want people with diverse experience. So kind of the MBA application is in an exercise in soul searching, actually. You have to know who you are and what your strengths are and what you bring to the table and showcase that in your application in a coherent way. You know, the application has to make sense. Your resume tells what your work experience, you know, the essays tells what, you know, your thought process, you know, what your beliefs are, what your um, passions are. Um, your cover letter tells us where you want to go. So, you know, each part of the application, you have to treat it in a very strategic manner. Um, so, yeah, we're looking for authenticity. We're looking for people who are willing to, to you know, to be transformed because we are not your usual MBA program. Uh, you know, like some, some, some people, they, they expect, to go and study for a master's. Hey, I'm just going to study. I'm going to sit in class. I'm going to pass all of my exams. And there I have my MBA degree done. But, you know, if you reflect like the person entering the program and the person graduating, they're the exact same people. So we are not that kind of program. We are a transformation program. So, um, so, uh, and it won't be easy. It won't be like you can coast. So if you're looking to coast, this is not the program for you. You will absolutely have to work hard. You'll get to know people from different cultures uh, and different ideas and different beliefs than you. Um, you'll have to learn how to get along and how to you know, make great impact um, and grow uh, and, and grow and change. And that's what our MBA is about. It's about people who are willing to take that scary step and decide that they want to change for the better. Uh, and Mighty Sloan, can I please elaborate on the Mighty Sloan program for partner schools? Yes, I mentioned it earlier, it's the MSMS program. So that's a separate admission process from ASB. So how it works is that you have to submit a separate application or all, all the details are on their website. Um, I can give you the link later, but you, you may remind me if I, if I forget. You may remind me if I forget. So um, it's a separate admissions criteria. They will require a test score. Um, um, so you don't get you know, exemptions or anything. You have to follow the application process and it's only open to those who are graduates of uh, MIT Stone Partner School, so ASB is one of them. And it's like a one-year program uh, whereby you do a deep dive into a subject that maybe is covered uh, in, a, you know, in your MBA, but you want to do a further. So uh, some of our students who have successfully um, been admitted to MSMS program, 
what I remember, one person did a deep dive into real estate, the other person did um, social enterprise, another person did more an education kind of project. So it's a project based and you also take classes with the regular address of the Sloan, MIT Sloan community. So it's amazing. It's a one year amazing experience full of change. Um, so somehow each year, um, there's always an ASB person represented in the MSMS program at MIT. So right now it's Sharan. Uh, he just started in, yeah, in, in August. So yeah. Do we have to apply for the fellowship together with the MBA application? So um, I'll repeat, we use the same material that you submitted in your ASB application to consider you for fellowship. So there is no separate application what you submit in the ESB application, that's what we use to consider you on a merit basis for um, fellowship opportunities. Yeah, uh, look forward to connect with me. Yes, so do I. So just um, hook me up on LinkedIn, that would be great. Um, so thank you so much for this session. Oh yeah, you're welcome. So let me see if I have time to get to the other application. So Jin Shen asked, how is the entire uh, process like and what is the expected timeline for each process milestone? So I think I kind of addressed that. Um, so once you submit, uh, maybe hopefully in a several weeks after the, the round deadline, you can receive your interview invite. And for round one, um, the we aim to release decisions in uh, mid-December and for round two, uh, it will be roughly seven weeks uh, after round two. So it's typically six, seven weeks after the round deadline. Um, and uh, like progress or milestone, you'll have to log into your ASB application portal and uh, you'll be advised of, you know, if there's anything missing or, um, you know, we, uh, or where are you at this process? Are you invited for interview or not? And did you get the decision or not? Or are you waitlisted, uh, you know? Uh, a lot of things can happen. What is the maximum scholarship opportunity normally available for international student? Um, the maximum that could be awarded is 100% that covers the program fees. So it covers the program fees, but does not cover your living expenses. So our program fees are very comprehensive. They include uh, residence, accommodation. Uh, they include um, insurance, school supplies, what they do not include is um, accommodation over your summer project. Uh, so you should be prepared to pay for that. And uh, they also include the you know, flight to MIT Sloan and the accommodation at MIT Sloan on a sharing basis. If you want your own room at MIT Sloan, you will have to pay more, but you do get to share room. But it's a really a nice um, apartment. Um, it's kind of an, uh, an apartment that you share with uh, in a residence. Uh, Marriott that uh, um, a kind of hotel is operated by the Marriott uh, like 10 minutes walk from MIT Sloan uh, class so yeah and also we provide like a, a standard room at ASB if you want a bigger room a bigger apartment then you'll have to pay extra but typically that's it so you should plan to have some money for your personal expenses because the fellowship will not cover that even if it's 100 percent um, so yeah but um, like I mentioned earlier, maybe 100% fellowship will be quite rare. Someone has to be an absolute rock star in order to receive one. Um, Dr. Hairi um, is asking, I'm very interested in attending, but cost factor and prohibitory, I need to discuss um, with one of the deans. Oh no, I said, well, top, uh, you may like connect with me and we can discuss, um, you know, there are fellowship opportunities as well. Um, that's also um, elucidated in our website and it's also within the application portal. So I suggest you start an application and kind of check out what the opportunities are. Um, and Anurag is asking me with the ASB MBA, how can you prepare to transition leadership roles and how the MBA is beneficial to someone enrolling in the program with 10 years of experience? An MBA is like a Swiss Army toolkit uh, kind of degree. Um, what you be, what you become afterwards, is what you make of it. I mean, we we provide you all of the tools and you know career development support while you're in the program. Um, so if you want to transition leadership roles, I think our MBA can be very helpful because um, you know 
smart skills or leadership skills are embedded throughout the program. Um, and we also have action learning projects whereby you go in student teams to host companies to solve real business problems. So there's a lot of ways to develop your leadership potentials. And even with someone with 10 years of work experience, um, that is probably not a, it's not a barrier to applying or doing well in the MBA. I would reiterate, you should know what you want, who you are, what you want, what you hope to get, and we can be your partner in this. Um, no problem, Sarah. I uh, hope you had a great time. Regarding accommodation, there is accommodation for a small family. So I probably should mention that accommodation is on a needs basis. If you come to ESB with a family, we can accommodate you um, and we provide the accommodation that you need. Uh, so yes, there is, there are apartments. Uh, so I think that's it. That's all of the questions I have in, in that were pre-submitted. Um, do you have any other questions for me? Uh, we have a few more minutes, so I'll just wait. Um, but yeah, I do hope that um, all of you decide to apply and submit your application on time um, and apply in as early round as possible. But if you're going to rush your application, you know, if you're not ready to submit, then I would say submit as early as possible when you are ready. Yeah. But if you end up sabotaging yourself because you're submitting in a hurry, but you're not prepared, you know, that you, then it's probably better to uh, apply when you are really ready to submit a strong application. Because as I mentioned, especially for the full-time program, there are a lot of fellowship uh, opportunities. Um, almost everyone gets something. It could be, you know, 40, 50 percent or even, uh, you know, 65, 80 percent. Um, so it's in your best interest to submit as strong an application as possible. So yeah, I, I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed it. Um, I hope I've answered all of your questions. So um, thank you very much for joining me this evening. It's been a pleasure. Um, so please, uh, you know, kind of uh, don't feel shy to reach out to me if you have further um, queries. I'll be as responsive as possible, though, um, you know, tomorrow is a pretty busy day for us, as is the round one deadline, so we'll be absolutely swamped. Um, so, um, but yeah, but I hope you guys are ready. You're very much welcome. So I think we can end the session if there are no more questions. Um, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, so have a great evening, or if you're in, in this region, or maybe, um, you know, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. So thank you so much, and have a great day. Bye now. <laughs>